Okay, if you want to get right to the tutorial, please go to this timestamp because I'm probably about to have a pretty long and rambling intro here. So if you're new to this world, QGIS is a really powerful mapping tool. QGIS stands for Quantum Geographic Information System, and cartographers and data scientists use this tool to do you know, really complex data analysis, create various cartographic visualizations. And if you want to get serious about map animations, I highly suggest you learn your way around this tool. What I'm going to be showing you today is essentially how to bring in layers and features from QGIS directly into After Effects. And you're going to bring them in as either a PNG or a PDF. So you'll have either a raster or a vector. And once you're in After Effects, that's all it simply is. You'll have a map broken into all those elements, whatever elements you decide that you'll be able to animate. You won't be able to do any kind of like spatial analysis in After Effects because you'll only have the native After Effects tools to use. If, however, you have the GeoLayers 3 plugin, you can also use this technique with a different geospatial file format. So I'll touch more on that a little bit later. I suggest you pay attention, follow this video step by step, because if even one step is wrong, it can kind of make the whole process not work. Also, you might want to bookmark the video and, you know, pause, scrub around, rewatch it if you want. Now, if you're really interested in QGIS, I actually just started working on another YouTube channel of this company called Felt. They have a browser-based mapping tool that they have, and I've started working on a QGIS series on their YouTube channel called QGIS Corner, and we're actually going to be putting out tutorials weekly. So I highly suggest you pause this video right now, go over to Felt's YouTube channel, subscribe, and be sure to activate notifications. And also check out the latest video that I have on there on QGIS. It's 11 tips for QGIS newbies, which is going to be perfect for you if you're new to the program. Links for all of that are going to be down in the video description. Okay, finally, on to the tutorial. So if you don't have QGIS, naturally the first step is going to be to head over to QGIS.org and download the latest version. You can actually specify to download the latest stable version, which is what I suggest. Once we get going here, you open up a new project. Make sure you have layers and browser open. If you can't see those, go to the view menu and then select panels and you'll be able to bring them up in here. So we need a map. How do we get a map? Well, it's really simple. If you just go down here to coordinates and select and type in the word world and then hit enter, that's going to load this preloaded geo package map that QGIS has installed here. You can see now we have a new layer. So I just want to have two layers so that I have a couple of things to bring into Adobe After Effects. So I want to show you how they're lined up and how we can place them in Adobe AE. I'm not going to be focusing on styling. This is probably going to be pretty ugly stuff. This is just to show you the workflow of how to get from QGIS to Adobe After Effects. So we have this layer. Now I just want to pull one of the countries off and separate it. By the way, I don't know if this is the best way to do it. So if you know QGIS, please tell me the best way to do this. What I'm going to do is grab this Select Features button, and let's just grab Brazil. I click on it here. Once that's selected, I can right click on the layer, and I can go to Export, Save Selected Features As, and the format is set to Geo Package. I'm going to call it Brazil. We'll call the layer name Brazil. And then down at the bottom, you see it says Add Saved File to Map which is what we want. By the way, you should check out all these different file formats. You can actually do GeoJSON or Shapefile, whatever you want. And a lot of these files, once again, side note, work with GeoLayers 3. Now I'm going to click OK, and it creates a new layer here. So now we have Brazil, and we have World Map. Real quick tip, if you're doing a lot of this work between After Effects and QGIS, you might want to use spatial bookmarks just to give you different views. Let's say you're working on a close-up view and you're working on a wide view. What you can do here is you have spatial bookmarks. So if I right click and do new spatial bookmark, I can essentially have it save where the, the basically the canvas borders are. So let's call this wide. I can go ahead and save that. And if we want to go to Brazil, I can right click on Brazil and I can say zoom to layer, right click on spatial bookmarks again, new spatial bookmark, and we could call it close. And now if you open these up, you can see I have a couple of different ones. I have close, wide, and then limo, of course. So now I can just double click on wide, double click on close. Now, I wanna export these. How do you export them? You can just have a layer selected and go to project, import export and then say export map to image. However, it doesn't have all the fine tuned parameters that you can adjust. So I don't suggest doing it this way if you want to bring it into After Effects. What you want to do is go to Project and go to Layout Manager. Now don't be scared away. This can be intimidating because there's so many options, but I'm going to take you through it. Don't be scared. Everything's cool, baby. 
go ahead and click layout manager it's going to bring up this new panel here and i'm going to click on this create button so this is going to allow us to create a new one i'll name it for after effects and this is going to bring up the layout manager now what i want to do is i want to change this little canvas here to match the size of my after effects comp so for that i simply click on it and it brings up the page size information over here if you can't see that right click on it and select manually uh, page properties here. You have a size drop down menu here. At the bottom, you actually have a template for 1920 by 1080, but I ain't no HD punk. So I'm gonna select custom, and then under width and height, I'm gonna switch the units to pixels, and then I'm gonna manually type in 3840 by 2160. One important thing, what's well, not really important, it's kind of critically imperative, is you have to come down here to background. And this is where you can specify the transparency options. So you click on this, there's a transparency slider here. Drag this all the way to the left. And you notice that as I drag it, it's changing colors. It's changing colors because it's removing everything. So now there's transparency, very important. Okay, to add our map, there's a little button over here called Add Map. Click on it, that's gonna bring up a crosshair. You can click and drag, which will manually you know, draw it, or you can double click, and this will automatically, it looks like it's drawing it out to fit our canvas automatically. Click OK, and there's our map. Okay, it didn't center it up, but hey, no big deal, because I think there's snapping on here. It should snap, snap, there we go. Okay, perfect. So we have a map. Another critically important step is we have to do the background thing again on an item level. So you see I have the item properties now selected because I have this selected. Down here we have background checked. So all you have to do is deselect it and now you have transparency. The thing about this map is I think it defaults to like 80% or 60% opacity. So it's gonna have some transparency when we bring it into After Effects. So now we have this map, I can bring it to After Effects. However, these two layers are kind of stuck together. So I need to export them separately. So to do that, what I can do is I can minimize this layout manager and go back to my map and simply turn off the visibility of my world map just so I have Brazil here and then go back to my layout manager. And if we click on it, there's a little refresh button. It might refresh on or update, update map preview. There we go. Okay, we have Brazil. We're pretty much ready to export this out. So to export it, you have three options up here at the top. You have export as image, you have export as SVG, and you have export as PDF. So I'm gonna select image. This is gonna be a PNG. And I'll just type in Brazil for After Effects. Again, I can manually type in things here. I don't think we need 300 DPI. I think we can bring that down to 72. You can manually adjust these as well, but we wanna keep it at Ultra HD 4K. So I'm gonna click Save, and that's gonna export this out. Now I'm gonna quickly export it as a PDF as well. So here we go, we'll call this Brazil for After Effects. It's gonna be PDF. And for some reason, I don't know, it doesn't allow you to manually adjust the resolution here. It gives you a couple of different options. You can change you know, a few different things like the image compression, but I don't see anywhere in here where you can change the, basically the width and height, but it doesn't matter because this is gonna be a vector and you'll be able to infinitely scale it. You won't lose, it won't pixelate. Now, to get the world map background, I just need to go back to QGIS here, turn off the visibility of Brazil, turn on the visibility of world map, and now go back to layout manager, refresh. Now we have our world map, and once again, export this as a PNG, and as a PDF, call it world map for After Effects, PNG, and then, yes, that's fine, and then our PDF as well. Now, you're probably asking, why aren't you doing it as SVG? Well, SVG doesn't really work that well with Adobe After Effects. I saw there's a new plugin that allows you to do it, but it's just annoying. It's just another step. You have to go into Illustrator, yada, yada, yada. I don't, I don't wanna do it. I ain't about that. Now we're ready to head over to After Effects and bring these files in. Okay, I have After Effects open here and I've got my four new layers. I'm just gonna grab them all and bring them into After Effects. And I could create a new composition manually, but I know that I can grab one of these PNGs and it's the right resolution. So I'm just gonna grab it and drop it directly on this little icon here, which is the new, new sequence button. And here we go, now we have our map and you can see it has this black background, but if I toggle transparency, you can see it's indeed transparent. And if I zoom in, as I mentioned, you can see that the transparency or the opacity level of these, I think is somewhere between 60 and 80. And now if I bring in the Brazil PNG, 
you see we have that isolated. Okay, so that's great. You, you know, what you could do now is you can do whatever kind of animation you want. You can attach these all to a null, animate the null, and go crazy. That, that that's, This comes down to now, like, what are your After Effects skills? But one thing to note is that, again, the PNGs are rasters and the PDFs are vectors. So the PDFs, you'll be able to scale up. So if I go and grab, I'll, I'll turn the visibility of these off and grab these PDFs. And it, once again, for some reason, it brings these PDFs in at this small size. If you look at the resolution, these are 922 by 518. I don't know if it was that image compression that it did. And these can be pretty, these can be pretty render intensive as well. So the first thing you need to do with these PDFs is right here in this column, you have this little collapse transformations and it, what, actually it's continuously rasterized. So we need to activate this for both of these. Now, when we scale these up, they're gonna be crisp, no matter how much we scale them up. So you can grab both of them and right click and go to transform and you can do fit to comp width or fit to comp. And now we have these. Once again, you can do whatever you want. I could just create a new null. Let me just create a new null. And then we could attach these both, you know, parent them both to the null. And then if I scale the null, let me show you. Actually, let me attach, let me attach everything. I'll attach all four of these to the null now. And we're gonna scale it up. So right now we have the vectors selected. So if I scale it up, scale it up, scale it up, scale it up, you're gonna see that as I zoom in here, these are still crisp. These strokes, these lines are still crisp. Let me turn off uh, the vector now and turn on the raster. And there you go, there you see there's the difference. These just basically pixelate once you go over the 100% of the resolution, the native resolution that you brought them in at. So there's there's a couple different ways you could go about this. You could export them as a huge resolution and then fly around in that way in raster mode. That's gonna save your, uh, save your system a little bit more or you can bring them in as a vector which gives you that ability to scale them up infinitely while you do this. There are better ways to do this but I would say this is probably the easiest way uh, if you just want to do a few layers, nothing too crazy complex, this is a fun way. However, once you incorporate Adobe Illustrator and other third-party plugins like, like a tool called Overlord, then you have a workflow that's incredibly powerful. You can export your, G, your QGIS project as an SVG, and then it'll have all those layers that you can then shoot over straight to Adobe After Effects, or you can bring in, you can convert it to an Adobe Illustrator file, bring that in as a composition, and that's a very powerful way to work. However, I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible because not a lot of people know how to use Illustrator. And if you're already trying to like find your way around QGIS, trying to find your way around Illustrator is, is difficult as well. And it, basically, I'm trying to cut down on those moments where you don't know what you did. You click on the wrong button, you hit the wrong hotkey, you can be lost and it's super frustrating. And yeah, let me know what you think about this. Uh, QGIS folks, if there's a better way to take out a feature from a layer and duplicate it, Please share that with me because I want to learn. Again, go check out the Felt YouTube channel. There's just going to be a ton of QGIS stuff. I'm about to go QGIS beast mode, to be honest. I feel like my QGIS skills are about to go through the roof. Yeah, but now we've got Brazil uh, isolated here. We could do some kind of flickering opacity in. We could do whatever kind of After Effects magic we want. Okay, there you have it. Let me know what you think. If you liked the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel, activate notifications if you wanna see more content like this. I think in the next video, I might show you how to work with OpenStreetMap, how to do a thing directly from OpenStreetMap to After Effects. There's a similar workflow that's pretty cool and OpenStreetMap gives you a totally different vibe. Um, but it allows you to, you can bring them in as vectors and infinitely scale them, which is very cool for uh, OpenStreetMap. So let me know if you want to see that. And again, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm a rambling intro and rambling outro. <laughs> Only the super fans have made it this far. If you see this part, you are a super fan. <laughs>